It crashes through the spearmen, bowling them aside with its bulk and snapping bone with its jaws. While the reclamation of Storm Peak has revitalised the town of Golden Fields, the humans living there are still beset by dangers. The Silver Mountain Dwarves hold the northern approach to the town at the fortified halls of East Watch. Refugees trickling in from the eastern border speak of a growing horde of goblins marauding across the land, and goblin warbands pass by the southern border, raiding isolated farms and testing defences. Receiving word of another of these incursions, Edmund the Ox, champion of Golden Fields, leads a force of men and dwarves south across the Stony Creek River to drive them off. The Goblins bring a 980 point raiding force to the table, led by Bix the Goblin Captain, commanding 14 Goblin Spearmen. He also has 10 Goblin Soldiers, 10 Orc Soldiers, 10 Goblin Archers, 5 Wolf Rider Scouts, 2 units of 5 Goblin Slaves, who I'm giving an expendable rule, and a Bargast. The 970 point force from Golden Fields is led by the human champion Edmund the Ox. He has the heroic ability, Stand Your Ground, allowing him and his unit to automatically pass one morale test. Speaking of which, he leads the Golden Field Guard, a unit of 19 human spearmen. With him are 10 human soldiers, the Golden Field Swords, 10 dwarf soldiers, the Storm Peak Detachment, 2 units of 10 human archers, the Golden Field Hunters, and Golden Field Bowmen, who have a battle honour, and a dwarf light catapult, Braylon. The table is set for a simple pitched battle. An impassable roundhouse and fields that are rough terrain occupy the bottom with a simple hill in the centre top. The goblins deploy on the right, archers on their left, with a screen of slaves covering the centre, and the wolf riders and bargast on the right flank. The men of Goldenfield deploy a simple front line in the centre, with their ranged units sheltering behind. Black dice for the goblins, blue for the men, results in the goblins taking the initiative on the first turn. Encouraged by Bix, goblin slaves frantically rush forward. Get them! Get them! Mirrored by the Goldenfield swords, who are keen to close with their enemy. Edmund and the Goldenfield guard advance beside them. Edmund reining the swords in with a shout Easy. to hold their ground. For all of us. The orcs move up behind their missile screen, bellowing war cries and beating their shields as the goblin soldiers move into the crop fields. Oh, tasty grains, tasty man flesh. Both the Goldenfield bowmen and the hunters move up behind the front line, fitting arrows to their strings. The goblin archers match them, running up to the cover of the fields. Bix leads his bodyguard of spear goblins forward behind his oddly eager screen. Wait, why are we going first? The Storm Peak Dwarves advance and wheel to guard the flank, shields held high, and the crew of Braylon run their loaded machine into position. With practiced ease, instructions are relayed and Braylon lobs a shot high over the Goldenfield guard with a snap. The ball strikes one of the goblin soldiers before burying itself in the loose soil of the tilled field. The rest of the soldiers carry on heedless of the shot. Bix has shouted, uh, encouragement, stealing their resolve. The Wolf Rider scouts lope forward and loose a barrage of arrows towards the Storm Peak detachment, but the arrows scatter across path and shield. Disappearing and reappearing from the shadows, the Bargus discorporates behind the goblin line, using the hill to block dwarven eyes. Turn 1 ends pretty well as expected. The lines are closing and a lucky goblin caught the ball Braylon tossed. Let me get him. Let me get him. Hold here. Let them come to us. Initiative on turn 2 is taken by the men of Golden Field with a 7. Spotting the large black beast in the distance, the Golden Field swords quickly relay its position to Braylon's crew. Reloading and releasing, they send a projectile towards the beast. 
visions of the perfect shot playing through their mind. But sadly their dreams evaporate with my failure to turn the dice cam on, and in reality, their indirect shot strikes the earth wide of any targets. The goblin archers, steady under Bix's gaze, loose a ragged volley over the soldiers in the field, towards the Goldenfield swords on the edge of their range. The men raise their shields in defence as the arrows fall around them. One of the men is slow to react, and a wicked arrow catches him in the shoulder. He cries out in pain, and is forced from the fight, the eager swords mocking him in good spirits as he makes his way, shame faced to the rear. As he passes, the Goldenfield hunters release a volley over the soldiers before them, at the wave of oncoming goblins. Without the protection of armour or shields, the goblin slaves stand no chance against the hail of arrows, and only a single slave is left standing as the wave crashes against them. Panic fills his eyes, despite stern words from Bix behind him, and suddenly, he really wants to be somewhere else. After releasing their volley, the hunters back up in line with the more experienced Goldenfield bowmen. With a few more choice words, Bix succeeds in bullying the remaining slave into continuing his advance, and the poor bugger continues to stumble towards the human lines. Despite their eagerness to close with the goblins and prove their mettle, the Goldenfield swords back up into line with the Goldenfield guard, giving the archers more time to whittle the goblin numbers down. The goblin soldiers continue trudging through the field, feet sinking into the loose soil and slipping on slick leaves as they trample the crops. The Storm Peak detachment shuffle across and back, using their shields as a barrier to defend the light catapult from the approaching wolf riders. Unnerved by the proximity of the shadowy Bargast, the wolves do not respond to their master's commands, and the riders struggle to do little more than wheel their mounts down the road. The Goldenfield Guard hold, letting the archers do their thing. The Bargast continues its jump across the battlefield, discorporating and reforming before Bix and the Goblin Spears. The final human unit is the Goldenfield Bowmen, who loose an arcing volley towards their closest enemy, the Lone Goblin Slave. To no one's surprise, the final slave is cut down mercilessly. With only Goblin units left, the second unit of slaves questions what they are doing, fails to activate, and shuffles forward non-committally. The Orcs move up behind them, their fierce presence all that keeps the slaves moving. Uh, keep moving. And finally, our inspiring leader Bix moves up. Making sure the slaves are still taking the lead, his spear goblins move around the Bargast, giving it a wide berth before forming up on the other side. Uh, good doggy. Turn 2 and the goblins have continued their advance, although it has slowed with a number of units failing to activate. The human shooting was excellent, a shame it only cut down a handful of slaves. All according to Bix's plan. Get them and fill your bellies, or I'll have yours. Initiative on turn three goes to the humans again with a seven. Swiftly reloading, the crew of Braylon lay the catapult on another target. Unfortunately for Bix, with his screen gone, he's walked into direct line of sight with the catapult, and with a crack, it lobs a stone shot at his bodyguard. The stone shot strikes the helmet of a goblin in the front rank, crumpling the iron shell and shattering the shot, showering the goblins in the second and third rank with jagged stone shards. Four more fall groaning as they are beaten and sliced by the shrapnel, and the rest of the unit begin to screech in panic. Ah, panic, panic. I don't blame them. Cracking heads together and bellowing threats, Bix manages to restore order within his bodyguard, simultaneously ordering the slaves forward to engage the enemy. The goblin slaves are questioning their choices leading up to this moment, and shuffle forward uneasily. Hardly the rush Bix was after. Bix steps his unit forward, staying out of charge range of the enemy. He's happiest leading from behind, so others can engage the enemy first. The Goldenfield Bowmen loose another volley over the guard to their front, cutting down four of the goblin slaves. Though the last, surprisingly, seems totally unconcerned. The wolf riders get their mounts under control and advance down the road. Catching sight of the large unit of spearmen, they release their arrows into the flank of the unit, striking down one of the men. The rest are startled by the hail of arrows, but maintain their composure. Steady, lads. The dwarf soldiers hold their ground as the wolf riders approach. 
The goblins in the field have to pause a moment to pull stragglers out of the churned up earth. I'm sure more than one is stuffing their face with soft half formed grain. And they wheel to make their way around the roundhouse. The golden field hunters wheel backwards to focus their attention on the right flank. Drawing their strings back, they release, showering Bix's bodyguard with arrows. Most hit the ground or are caught by a shield, but one unlucky goblin is struck in the forearm and falls from the fight. He quickly slinks away, and the rest of the unit jeers at the enemy archers. Without the oversight of Bix, the goblin archers begin to squabble amongst themselves, and the officer can barely get them to move into the field, let alone do any arching. The Goldenfield swords hold their ground, tapping weapon on shield and casting insults towards the oncoming goblins. The orc soldiers advance up the hillside, occupying a dominant position at the top. Edmund the Ox holds the Goldenfield guard in place, awaiting the right time to strike. The Bargus shifts into the shadows once more, reappearing in front of the roundhouse. The end of turn 3, the forces of Goldenfield have continued to hold and pepper the oncoming goblins, who are running low on slaves to catch arrows for them. The large body of spears has suffered greatly under the barrage from Braylon, and that left flank better get attacked into gear. Dear here, what in the hells is that? Turn 4 initiative goes to the men of Goldenfield with a 6. Braylon releases again, sending an indirect shot at the orcs on the top of the hill. That slave is obscuring them just enough. The shot passes through their ranks, bowling over two of the orcs. Unprepared for being the target of artillery, the orcs immediately start to panic. What was that? Seeing them begin to waver, Bix bellows threats in their direction. But the orcs ignore his shrill voice, and that of their officer, and mill around on the top of the hill. Spotting the wavering orcs, the Storm Peak detachment seize their chance. Wheeling, they charge towards the orcs on the top of the hill. The orcs are still a little far away however, and the dwarves charge loses steam as they begin to climb the slope. The dwarves impetuousness opens up a chance for the wolf riders, who quickly direct their arrows towards Braylon the light catapult. In an unusual display of precision, their shots are on point and the arrows strike down all three of the catapult's crewmen, removing it from the battle. Following up on their arrows, they continue to rush around the flank. The Goldenfield bowmen loose another volley over the guard in front of them, cutting down the last of the goblin slaves in a vicious rain of spines. The goblin archers continue to bicker, and the officer can only organise a half-hearted volley of arrows towards the Goldenfield swords. Nevertheless, the ragged volley manages to strike down another of the soldiers, the rest remaining keen to fight. The attention of the Goldenfield hunters is immediately caught by the appearance of the Bargast, and they loose towards the creature obscured behind the hay bales and wagon. Many arrows clatter off the cover, or are caught by the bales, but one finds a gap and sinks into the hide of the beast. It yelps in pain as it takes a single wound. Enraged by that pain, the black dog bounds into the front of the Goldenfield swords, howling a terrible cry. The swords shelter behind their shields as the Bargus tears into their ranks. Three of the men are savaged by the beast's jaws as it rampages through them. A few attempt to strike back, their weapons glancing off the creature's hide, and they fall back disordered, terrified by the horrific presence of the monster. It's not natural! We was told goblins, not hell beasts! Edmund the Ox gathers his troops to charge the Bargast, but its unearthly howls unnerve the men, and they remain deaf to Edmund's inciting cries. He manages to wheel the Goldenfield guard, but the men are unwilling You're to charge. Mad. I'm not going near that thing. With two goblin units left, the soldiers continue to be a disorganised mess. Realising he'll never corral them around the roundhouse in time, the officer wheels them towards the centre. Bix leads his bodyguard cautiously forward, trying to avoid overextending, and wheels into a position to engage the enemy. Turn 4 was a mixed bag, a lot of units failing to activate, Goblin Command and Control at its finest, though Edmund and the guard were hardly inspiring. 
The Bargast has finally landed, disrupting the human ranks, and the Wolf Riders cut down the catapult crew. If the goblins can sort out their activation issues, they've got a good chance to do some real damage. Oh, I can't. Stop shaking. Turn 5 initiative goes to the men of Goldenfield once more, though the goblins have a strange event on double eights. Good timing for a heroic charge. The Storm Peak Detachment finish their climb, slamming into the disordered ranks of the Orcs. The Orcs raise their shields in defence as the Dwarves strike, though it does them little good as the Dwarves fell three of their number. But these are no mere goblins, and occupying the higher ground, their blows rain down on the Dwarves in return. Three Dwarves fall under their hammering strikes, but the damage is done and the remaining Orcs flee from the hilltop. The dwarves cheer their victory as they watch the orcs go, and the goblin wolf riders begin to think about leaving as well. The hill blocks their sight to how the rest of the battle is going, but if the orcs are running, yeah they probably should too. Despite their flight, Bix remains confident and keeps his remaining goblins focused on their target. I'm not dying for these goblins. I'll let that be a lesson to you. The Bargus wheels around the side of the Goldenfield Guard and charges them in the flank as Edmund pushes through the ranks to meet it. It crashes through the spearmen, bowling them aside with its bulk and snapping bone with its jaws. Three fall in its initial strike before Edmund arrives on the scene. Leading with his shield, he smashes into its flank, driving it out of the ranks and hacks and thrusts around the wooden barrier with his sword. His strikes are true and his strength legendary as he carves the beast apart, ending it by burying his sword in its heart. The Bargus snaps weakly at one of the closest spearmen before succumbing to its wounds and falling from Edmund's blade. Stand your ground! With a heroic cry, he urges the men around him to stand their ground and they automatically pass their morale test despite their horrific enemy. Edmund, champion indeed. The Goldenfield Bowmen wheel back to target the disordered wolf riders, but Bix and his bodyguard remain their closest target, so they shoot at the more immediate threat. The volley of arrows sails over the Goldenfield Guard, cutting down another goblin spearman, but Bix is in the middle of a stirring speech about dwarf flesh, and the other goblins pay little attention to the falling arrows. With a shout to the goblin soldiers behind him, Bix pivots his bodyguard and rushes up the hill into the flank of the Stormpeak detachment. The goblins thrust forward with their spears in a frenzied charge, skewering two of the bearded soldiers. With a growl, one of the pierced dwarves cleaves a goblin with his axe before falling from his wound. The remaining dwarves begin to waver as they realise that they are exposed on both sides and the victorious goblins drive them from the hill. Following up on their captain's charge, the goblin soldiers get their act together and move forward, wheeling into the gap left by Bix and the spear goblins. Still shaking from the encounter with the Bargast, the Goldenfield swords struggle to keep it together. Spotting the dwarves fleeing down the hillside and hearing chants of goblin victory, the wolf riders realise that all is not lost and rally. They wheel back to threaten the flank of the disordered dwarves. The Goldenfield Hunters loose another volley into the oncoming goblins over the men before them. This time the arrows rain down on the goblin soldiers, striking one as the others shelter behind their shields. With an already unruly mob, their officer stands no chance of keeping them organised and they begin to falter under the fall of arrows. Ow! Arrows! The goblin archers, spotting the victory on the hill, realise that they are missing out and rush through the trampled crops, wheeling towards the action in the centre. Turn 5 ends, and things have happened. The Bargast was a flash in the pan, quickly being dispatched by Edmund the Ox, and morale on both sides is proving shaky. Now's the time, men. They cannot stand before us. Initiative on turn 6 once again goes to the men of Goldenfield with a 9. Edmund the Ox spots the wavering goblin soldiers and elects to ignore the captain, instead seeking to blow a hole in the wavering goblin line. Wheeling, they charge into the front of the goblins who huddle behind their shields. And the shields do their job. Despite being thrust at from multiple directions, the goblins manage to, for the most part, deflect the spear tips 
and only two goblins are slain. I've been trying some new spear rules this game and this is the first time that they have become relevant. Kept at bay by the length of the spears and huddling behind their shields, the goblins make a half-hearted counter-attack into the bristling wall. Failing to penetrate the thrusting points and the shields behind them, they cause no casualties before swiftly turning tail and running from the field. The goblin archers are far enough away that they just watch the soldiers go, and Bix's leadership keeps his bodyguard in line. The goblin wolf rider scouts release a scattering of arrows into the storm peak detachment's flank, though the sturdy armour and shield of the dwarves prove impervious. Is that all you got? But as soon as the arrows leave their strings, the wolves charge in behind them. They catch the dwarves unprepared. Dropping their guard as the hail of arrows passes, the wolves are among them before they realise what is happening, and three of the dwarves are pulled down. One of the remaining dwarves cuts a goblin from the saddle, and slicing the flank of one of the wolves sends it whimpering back into the trees. Outnumbered, outflanked and exposed, the remaining two dwarves grab one of their wounded comrades and drag him back behind friendly lines into safety, unable to hold the flank on their own. We cannot stop them. And the wolf riders lose control of their mounts, who tasting blood refuse to heed their riders commands as they worry at the fallen dwarves. The golden field hunters wheel back and send a volley over the bowmen, shooting at the rear of Vix's bodyguard. The slicing arrows cut through their ranks, the goblin shields providing no protection from behind, and three of the goblins fall with arrows in their backs. The rest are kept in order by Bix's threats and continue to hold their line. But his attitude quickly turns. As he pivots his unit in an about face, Bix realises just how alone he is and just how small his bodyguard has become. Discretion proves the better part of Valor and he immediately re-evaluates his willingness to charge. The Goldenfield Bowmen continue their wheel lining up the disordered goblin wolf rider scouts. They loose their arrows, but they fail to bring down any of the beasts, even when taking advantage of their battle honour for a re-roll. The goblin archers, excited to see a target in the open in front of them, release a volley into the front of the Goldenfield guard, managing to put down one of the spearmen, who remain in good spirits after their earlier victories. The final unit to activate are the Goldenfield Swords, who successfully gird themselves after the encounter with the Bargast and reform, ready to fight again. But at the end of turn 6, any chance of the Goblins pulling out a victory has evaporated, and Bix runs from the field, the rest of his Goblins hot on his heels. Victory goes to the men of Goldenfield. Oh, tiniest stool I could find. Right. Edmund the Ox. That man knows when to perform. Apart from some activation issues, things were going pretty well for the goblins up until about turn 5 when everything fell apart and suddenly they were out of steam. Spears are something that I want to play with as I think the brace rule as it is is a bit meh. More than anything it makes them an anti-goblin weapon and unlike say the shielding rule there's no counterplay against it. If you get charged in the rear by goblins, you still get brace. So I'm just having to play around with some different rules to see if I can make them more fun to play with and against. Although in this game I may have brought too many archers, so we didn't get to see too much. What do you lot think of these spear rules? Are they alright and I'm just being picky? Or have I made some sort of an improvement? Let me know what you think down below. Thank you very much to my patrons. Your continued support is, as always, very much appreciated. And thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you next time. Cheers.